we're starting a new series this morning. Uh, we've been in uh, the book of Acts over the last several months, uh, and we're just going to take a break from the book of Acts. We'll, we'll get back to it uh, in, in coming months, but we're going to be jumping into a new series that we've just titled Messy. Uh, it's just all about uh, relationships, uh, and, and we've just... Uh, Really, just thought just in the world today. Uh, we've been planning this this series for just several months. Uh, we just thought it was just intentional that we just take a, a break um, from from the Book of Acts and just really just dig into this fall series just on relationships. And, and we're not just looking at like just marriage relationships. We're looking at all relationships. Uh, and we're going to kind of really dig even into that here in just a little bit. But uh, I was just thinking, just even in this title of of messy. Um, man, I, I was I was thinking about how messy like kids' relationships are. Uh, I remember like being a kid. Uh, one of my favorite stories of, of kind of that when I was in fifth grade. Uh, once a week, we always went and sat with uh, kindergartners, uh, and we had one particular ki- kindergartner we always sat with. Uh, was really good friends with with this particular kid. And I remember one week we asked him and said, "Hey, you got a girlfriend?" Right? He's a kid in our we're, we're in fifth grade, and and uh, he says, "Yeah." We're like, "Oh wow, okay, who?" And he's like, her, at the end of the table, says her name. And we're like, oh, man, we're like high-fiving him. And he just goes, don't tell her, right? <laughs> like, yeah, that's my girlfriend, just don't tell her. Uh, and, and it's funny, like, man, especially kids, you know, you can have a best friend one day and the next day, right, mortal enemies. I know uh, Samson, he'll come home and he'll tell us his best friends for the day. I was like, that's not how best friends work, but uh, that's how he thinks they work, at least at this, this moment in his life. And, and you would think, right, as, as you get more mature and you get more life under your belt, right, that, that relationships get less messy. But the reality is they, the stakes just get a lot higher. And the messiness gets a lot more serious and, and, and intense. And that's why we, we just thought it was just important to, to really just dig into a, a series on relationships, and so the, uh, if you're not here the rest of the week, so we want you to be here for the whole series, um, but I really believe this week is the most important, because so, if you don't have the foundation that we're going to be dealing with t- today, none of the rest of the things really matter, uh, so, so this week is most important, and uh, it's going to be a little bit different than the way we, we typically kind of preach through things. Normally, we read a passage and kind of walk through that. It's going to be a little bit more topical, uh, but we're definitely going to be including scripture and... Uh, not including it. That's going to be the, the focal point of, of everything that I have to say. So uh, just the, the, the foundation of why we're even talking about this. The first point I want to give you this morning is this reality that we were designed for relationships. We were designed for relationships. Uh, as I was getting into this and just thinking about, man, the messiness of all relationships, Man, every relationship I've had in my life has been messy at some point or the entire relationship. And I was just thinking, man, there's some points in life it just would feel like it would be so much easier just to, like, sell everything, go buy land in Wyoming, and live out, you know, the rest of my days alone. But the reason we we can't do that as Christians is because, and just even as people, is because we were designed for relationships. And I want to show you that. One of my favorite verses is one of the verses we, we get image church from. Genesis 1, 26, it says, Then God said, let us, right, just uh, uh, a little bit, even disclaimer at the very beginning, that this us, this is a plural language. God saying, hey, uh, this is God the Father, God the Son, Jesus, and God the Holy Spirit. They're, they're together in this moment. They decide and agree it, in the midst of a relationship, right? So, so we have the, the, the picture of the very first ever relationship between God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And here's what they decided. They said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So the very first thing, that God created and said, hey, we're going to make this not just the way we've made everything else, right? Because up to this point, all the animals have been created. God looked in, in the community of the Godhead and said, hey, we want to do something special. We want to create man in our 
image. And so uh, since we are relational, since God literally exists in community, when he created us and designed us in his image, he designed us for relationships. So much so, the very first time in all of Scripture that God said something wasn't good. Over and over in Genesis 1, you have God saying, hey, I I separated the light from the darkness, and it was good. I I made the the sea animals, and it was good. I made the birds, and it was good. Over and over, he says it was good. The very first time God says something was not good is in Genesis 2, 18. The Lord said, it is not good that the man shall be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. Amen. That's right. That, that, was a, that was appropriate amen right there. Come on. Uh, <laughs> uh, right? So, so it was from the very beginning and still true today that God's design for you was to have and to be in relationship. One of the, the things that I thought was interesting, Rick Warren, he says uh, one of these things this way. He says, four of the Ten Commandments deal with our relationship to God, while the other six deal with our relationships with people, but all 10 are about relationships. And that's that's the the most important thing uh, about your life. And and there's so many aspects of relationships. And and what we're even going to be talking about uh, throughout this series is we're going to be talking about marriage relationships, but also parent relationships, business relationships, difficult relationships, relationships we wish we didn't have, right? We're going to be talking about uh, all types of relationships because we were designed for relationships. And and here's the second thing. I already alluded to this in the very beginning. Really kind of the the crux of our our whole series is that relationships are messy. I wish this wasn't true, right? I wish we were just designed for relationships, and if we had relationships, they would just be easy. But the reality is relationships are messy. They're messy. They come with baggage. They come with different experiences, different desires, But I want to show you why I believe that the relationships are messy. Here's what it says in Genesis 3, right? We're kind of following that account. We looked at Genesis 1, Genesis 2, uh, right? Closing out Genesis 2, everything is good. Adam and Eve are on the scene. Uh, It says they were uh, naked, unashamed. They They were just in right relationship with each other and with God. Everything was great. The beginning of Genesis 3, we have... uh, the one rule that was given to them broken, right? God said, hey, you can do anything except eat from that tree right there. It's perfect. We got some trees on the side. Uh, so, hey, just do anything. Just don't eat from that tree. And Adam and Eve do the very thing they weren't supposed to do, right? Sounds like uh, toddlers or us, right? <laughs> so they eat from the tree, but then something really stuck out to me uh, when I was studying this week. When, when God is now giving consequences to Adam and Eve, he says, because you, you hindered our relationship, because you brought sin into the world, because of this mistake, here's some consequences of that. Genesis 3.16 says, to the woman he said, I will surely multiply your pain and childbearing. That's my wife's most hated verse in all the Bible right now. And that's usually what we focus on. Later it talks about that, that, that men will have difficulty in their work. Working will be much harder than it was ever designed to be. But here's one that I just didn't really even think about until this past week. It says, in pain you shall bring forth children, but your desire shall be contrary to your husband, but he shall rule over you. Well, God said, hey, man, a consequence of you severing the relationship you have with God, you're going to have difficulty in your relationships from here on out. The very thing that you were designed for is now going to be a lot tougher than it was ever supposed to be. And man, for, for the married people in the room, they just feel like, man, that is 100% true. Because almost every time I, I, I meet with like a married couple, it's like, man, we got one spender and one saver. You know, we got one person that goes to sleep at 8, 8, 8 p.m., another person goes to sleep at 2 a.m., right? You got these individuals almost always that they, they come together that's like, man, I desperately desire things that you desperately hate. But we see that, that it was part of a consequence of the fall of the world. It says, hey, hey, this very thing that you were designed for is now going to be a lot harder than it was ever supposed to be. And man, that's difficult to hear. But one thing I want to 
to really encourage you with. Just because something is difficult doesn't mean it's wrong. Man, one day when you get to heaven, if you uh, get the opportunity to talk to Moses, and you get to ask him, he's like, man, you were literally designed, you were chosen to set God's people free and, and lead them to the promised land. Right? That's, you lived on this earth for 120 years. You spent your entire life just living out that mission. And you were just so designed for that. Man, wasn't it easy? Imagine Moses would laugh in your face and would jump to tell you like that was the most difficult thing in all of existence. And in the same way, even though you were perfectly designed for relationships, and we have this, this pre knowledge that they're going to be difficult. It could still be true that, that God wants that for your life. Even though relationships are messy and they take a lot of work, we were designed for them, and, and God wants us to even work through the messiness. But here's the reality that's true, is that our relationships with others will never be right, if our relationship with God is wrong. Our relationships with others will never be right if our relationship with God is wrong. When God designed us in in this way to to say, hey, you were made for relationships, and and because you severed the relationship with God, it's going to be much harder than you ever thought it was going to be. I feel like even in that moment, God could also said, but it's going to be so worth it. And so if we were designed for relationships, and, and even though the difficulty shouldn't per, uh, dissuade us from pursuing them, so how do we get the most out of our relationships? How do we kind of fix that? How, how do we go back in time and make uh, Adam and Eve not eat from the tree? And it's just this, this reality of our next point is that, and our last point is that our relationship with God affects every other relationship. Our relationship with God affects every other relationship, and we see that in Genesis 3. Because of the, the, the issue in the relationship that Adam and Eve had with God, it affected their relationship and every relationship to follow. I would say just the source root of every problem in every relationship with you that you have, your relationship with your spouse, your relationship with your, your co-workers, with your boss, the deepest root of all of those is, is a lack of a relationship with the Father. Now, there's a lot of other symptoms. There's a lot of other things going on. But at the foundation, our relationship with God affects every other relationship. And it's impossible to be fully satisfied in your relationship with other people if it's dissatisfied with God. I say it this way. It says you will always be, always be disappointed in relationships if you are looking for them to satisfy you the only way that Jesus came. You will always be dissatisfied in relationships if you're looking for the relationship to be the answer that you've always been looking for. You're looking at it to fill a hole that only Jesus can fill. It goes goes back to the the movie Jerry Maguire. I don't know if you've ever seen that movie. It's a a pretty older baseball movie. There's just one scene in the movie where Jerry Maguire, he's a sports agent. He goes to the girl that he's pretty much lost at this point. He tells her, hey, you complete me. It's supposed to be this big fireworks love moment. And you cannot be completed with another broken person. Jesus is the one and the only one that, that, that can make you whole again. And I promise, if you, if you try to find that, that, that joy and that fulfillment in any person, you will be dissatisfied. I remember that early on in, in my relationship with my wife. The way the story goes for me, she tells it differently. I tell it the right way, uh, especially since she's not here right now. 
I, I pursued her for four years. I thought she was the most incredible woman. I still think she's the most credible woman in the entire world. And, and at times it seems just so difficult to, to, to finally just uh, to go on a date with her uh, that once it finally happened, I had her so high on this pedestal. I thought she was perfect. I had this such romanticized uh, idea of her. But in her wisdom, this, this even speaks to how, how incredible she was. She says, hey, you have me on this pedestal that I can never live up to. And so either you need to, to, to allow me to step off this, this pedestal and stop thinking of me in this way, or I will disappoint you. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. And that's true of every single relationship. Maybe uh, it's you, it's like, man, if, if, if I just have a kid, it'll finally satisfy what I've, what I've longed for in my heart my, my whole life. Or maybe if I just get a really good friend. I've never had really a best friend. Or maybe I had one at one time and it was great and I need another one. And, and, and whatever relationship you're longing to satisfy you, it will disappoint you. It's a guarantee. But here's the good news. Romans 5 is true. And what it says is, for if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God. By the death of his son, much more, now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we, are, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. And so even though in Genesis 3 our relationship with God was severed and was hurt, we were made distant from God. Jesus came to this earth to say, hey, I, I don't want it to stay this way. He came to this earth uh, to live a perfect life, to die on the cross for your mistakes and for my mistakes, and to take them on himself so that you could get really good stuff. No, so that you could be reconciled to God, so, so that the most important relationship could be made right. It's easy to think and get frustrated. It's like, man, why did, did Adam and Eve, why did they have to mess it up for all of us? It's easy to think about, man, if I was in that situation, I wouldn't have done that. All right, maybe you've thought of this before. Maybe you're, you've thought, man, if I was in that situation, I'd have, like, cut down the tree, right? That, you, you'd find some loopholes. I'd have went to a different side, right? I, you're like, man, why do they have to represent me? And there's something we believe, it's, we're, we're going to get technical this morning, something called federal headship. Federal headship. You kind of understand this a, a lot in terms of, of, of government, right? We have a president that is uh, federal headship for us, that when he says, hey, we go to war, uh, even though you may not have voted, you say, I don't go to war. No, no if he, as our representative, says we go to war, we go to war. And so if you like it or not, Adam was our representative with something called federal headship. So he is our representative because since he fell, he represented all of mankind to ever exist. And so we're guilty of the same thing he was guilty of. And that, like, really stinks. I don't, I don't know if you're like, man, why do I got to pay for his mistakes? Uh, so it's not, you know, some people think it's, it's just because we would have made the same mistake, which we would have. But no, he's our representative. But the good news in that is even though Adam messed everything up, that we get to, to declare allegiance to a new federal head in Jesus. And he says, hey, I'm going to be your representative. And you can trust in me, and I can de declare your righteousness before holy God. And so because of that, we've been reconciled. We've been made right in the most important relationship in our life. But I want you to think for a moment. What relationships in your life are messy? I want you to think about them for a moment. Maybe it's family. Maybe it's spouse. Maybe it's kids. 
Maybe it's coworkers. Maybe it's every person that you drive around. All those relationships are messy. And I want you to think about it because it's easy to, to now think about all the things that those individuals do wrong, all the things they need to fix. And I want you to think for just a moment. It's like, how can I improve those relationships by pursuing Jesus? Because if we believe the foundation of a right relationship with people is a right relationship with God, why don't we make, take the first step of improving every relationship by saying, Jesus, I'm going to pursue you more than anything else. So really the question we ask is not how to have a better relationship with people, but the, the, the question that we have to answer is how do we have the best relationship with God? If we truly believe he's the key to better relationships in our life, a better marriage, a better school relationship, if he's the key to, to every relationship getting better, how do we have a better relationship with him? And as I was just, just thinking through that this week, I was, I was just really ready to give you a list of, of 15 things, 15 steps to take. And, and they really just all boiled down to how to benefit any relationship, but I need you to spend time with God. I need you to spend time with God. If you want a healthy relationship with the Father, the only time you read the Bible cannot be Sunday mornings at 10. If you want a healthy relationship with God, the only time you talk to him cannot be centered around blessing your meal. If you want a healthy relationship with God, the only time that you think about him uh, cannot be just for a couple minutes before bed. Whatever it is for you, uh, if you want a healthy relationship with God, not the minimum, but a healthy, growing relationship with the Father, we got to spend time with him. And we need to make that the, like the most important aspect of our lives. Because we have so many things in our lives that we will shift our entire schedule for. When's the last time you shifted your schedule for time with God? When's the last time we said, you know what, my, my schedule changed, but i got to make sure I still get these, these 10, this 15, these 30 minutes with Jesus. I don't care if I get to anything else, i got to have that time. Martin Luther used to say, I have too many things to do today uh, that I have no other choice than to spend three hours in prayer. I'm not saying that's your starting point. But I'm saying, if you want to be serious about the relationships in your life, we've got to be serious about our relationship with the Father. And, and here's where I want you to really hear me. I don't want you to take this and say, hey, I, I need the people in my life to live this out. Maybe those messy relationships you were thinking about earlier is like, yeah, man, if so-and-so would start spending time with God, it would benefit our relationship. No, 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 we need to start with you. I don't want you to think of anyone else in this context. We need to start with you. Because here's the reality. Your relationship with God is as good as you want it to be. Your relationship with God is as good as you want it to be. Because God is always saying, hey, I'm ready. Four a.m., I'm available. Ten o'clock at night, I'm here. There, there's never a moment like, a, like a, maybe a, a difficult friend you have is like, man, I just keep reaching out, and, and God never wants to spend time with me. No. So here's what I want us to take away this morning. And want us to really sit on us and, and, and really just think about, man, what am I going to do with that now, this week? The reality of your relationship with God is as good as you want it to be. So how do we want it? 
My prayer is that we have this foundation. It's been our prayer for our church. I've told you over the last three weeks that the rest of 2022, that our church would get closer to Jesus than we ever have before. Not just our church. I pray that for you. That you would be closer to Jesus than you ever have before in your life. I pray that for the end of this year. And as a result of that, I'm praying for, for flourishing, healthier relationships. But I believe it starts with this foundation. Would you bow your heads with me?